your eighth album, uh, Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder. For someone who, if someone hasn't heard it, how would you explain it to someone who hasn't heard the album? Um. <laughs> that was me communicating with uh, <laughs> um, the dolphins, <laughs> being my dolphin satellite. Um, I would say it was fast, ornate, cinematic, symphonic, angry, uh, malevolent. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I would, because it's about um, a character, Gilles de Ray, who was a real life 15th century alchemist sorcerer, one time compatriot of Joan of Arc, richest man in Western Europe in, in that century, um, and, you know, was arrested as a, as a child molester and a killer and blah, blah, blah. It, it's it's like a cinematic sort of, um, I'm trying to think of the word actually, um, God, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> soundtrack, okay, like yeah. a soundtrack or um, a musical oh, or something, gotcha. but, but, right. but obviously extreme metal. Kind of like bio biographical or you know, of the well, guys. It's, 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 a, it's a, it's a, um, a story that runs on throughout it. I'm trying to think, still thinking of the word, but my mind's just gone blank. Yeah, so I went for a walk earlier, and obviously the, the sun baked to my head. Um, but yeah. I know what you mean. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. So there's concept. The concept it's album. A concept ah, album. Right, right. <laughs> and it's not like loads of little concepts orbiting a main theme. It's you know a concurrent story throughout. Oh, that's and cool. you get it's kind of punctuated by narration as well, which were taken from the proper trial transcripts. So, you know, to get a feel of this character as well. Wow. What made you guys decide to choose him, you know, as opposed to someone else? I mean, was, was there anything that, like, oh, you know, that... Well, the, again, talking about atmosphere, when we were writing the record, or we just got a bit of it written, the feel of it and the time of year in which we were writing it, and lots of other things sort of collided to make it feel very much like the, the, the era in which we wrote Cruelty of the Beast, which was mm -hmm. our other album. Um, concerning a medieval serial killer which was the Blunt Countess Elizabeth Bathory. Mm -hmm. So I just glided over my old notes and uh, obviously you can't do one medieval serial killer, aristocratic serial killer without doing the other and uh, I'd obviously researched a bit of him mm -hmm. before. I thought well, actually you know ten years on the stars are right so. If it makes sense do it. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Um, well, were there any challenges recording or writing the new record? Was there anything, one or two things in particular that... Well, it's always ch challenging get, getting it, trying to make sure that all the songs work independently of one another and not... Also, as a, as a concept, but also, you know, so you can take each ev and every one of them out of concept. So you can have a single, you can have a... And people enjoy them regardless of what, what, what it's about. But together, it just works even better. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, that's hopefully we achieved that. That was the main objective. But um, this time it was a lot easier. We'd already planned to go in with Andy Sneap and have a studio A and B and do all the sort of musical stuff that you don't want to hear about. And um, so, in that in that respect, it was quicker. Um, well, now, as far as your fans, I mean, you definitely have a lot of very loyal fans that have been with you guys for you know probably since the beginning or pretty close to it. What would you, you know, of all your memories, what would you say is one of the craziest things a fan has done to try to get your attention or one of the guys' attention in the band? Uh, well, it wasn't exactly their, their fault, but there's, uh, in Italy, uh, no, it was, no, it was Greece. We've been followed by two fans chased in, the, in a bus and, um, on their own, like a moped, you know, and uh, as they turned the corner, they went just like, bang into another car <laughs> and over the bonnet. Not really, you know, I mean, it was Greece, there were cobbles and stuff, so. But they, they certainly hurt themselves. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that's very, like, old school, like, you know, pop band kind of stuff for somebody to chase somebody in a. Yeah. <laughs> Someone oh. chased us out of the rest. Well, we didn't. It was like a big congregation, and we, well, we knew it was day off. We really weren't feeling in the mood for 50 year old fans. And so our tour manager at the time taught the restaurant owner into let us go through all the kitchens and out the back door. But there was just one guy standing there, and he, we all thought there was like he would shout it to all the others. So we just ran off instinctively, laughing. <laughs> we thought we could outrun him. We didn't. He followed us for about a mile until we just gave up. It was just this one guy. <laughs> Where was that again? 
Um, somewhere in France, Nice, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, are you? Got, I mean, are there any bands that are currently out and about now that you've taken a particular liking to, or you're really into their music and you're really enjoying listening to? Well, I'm, I'm enjoying listening to both Septic Flesh and Satyricon because I get to see them free every night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we joke, you know, we wanted them to be on the tour. Um, I'm quite looking forward to the new Gorgoroth record, we just come off tour with them. So when you get to tour with people, you get to, you know, know their stuff quite intimately because you hear it every bloody night. Um, same with Moonspell, Rotten Christ, Craft. Um, yeah, and as always, looking forward to the new Bar Religion album and Merciful Fate records, you know, the usual, they keep coming around. Yeah, very nice. Well, what's uh, what's up next for you guys after this tour is over with? Um, I think we've got a couple of weeks off and then we fill it, uh, fulfill in the second leg of the tour that we started before Christmas, which is like three weeks. Uh, I think it's a slightly different lineup this time for kids. Might be Society One, um, Moonspell, uh, Tericius, someone else and ourselves. Um, then we've got a bunch of uh, festivals Australia. We've got a book coming out, uh, The Gospel of Filth. Oh wow! You can check if you want to find out what, about, what it's all about. Go to our website or Amazon or something like that. It's got descriptions of it. Um, we're supposed to be coming out round about Easter. Oh wow! Oh, that's right around the corner. I mean, mm. mid-April, so. Yep. Oh, that's great. So, and then the um, that tour with Moonspell is that coming over to the U.S. or is that strictly? No, that's just like a second half of Europe, doing oh, like oh. the bottom leg of it. Whereas we did the top leg before Christmas. Nice. So that's good. So yeah, just a lot of touring with the, the new album. Mm -hmm. So, but everybody, the the response. It sounds like it's been really good. Yeah, no, it's been great. Oh, that's good. Well, well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit with Pleasure. us and chat and and. Uh,